Greetings everyone, welcome to my Hitomi uh, guide tutorial. I'm Force of Nature representing top tier tips and I welcome you to your prime spot for tips and tricks to help you level up a Dead or Alive 5. Okay here we're going to be taking a look at Hitomi, more particularly Super Hitomi. And uh, right here I'm also uh, using the Attack on Titan stage which is uh, released fairly recently. but. Uh, Anyway, what I'm going to be looking at is just kind of um, explaining some uh, way to, ways to approach Hitomi. Not approaches and actually like going towards her, but like kind of like play style and uh, kind of recommended ways to play her. All right, so I'll just go over what I'll just go over what Hitomi is all about. All right, she's a fairly well-rounded character who specializes in both good keep out and good keep out like with moves like her famous death fists or with a good close range pressure so different kind of a mix up stuff like that so with Hitomi I'll just say right now a primary objective with her is essentially based around making it hard for their, your opponent to get kind of get their offense started on you what that means of course is like if you're fighting at range that means your focus is keeping your opponent out. So of course, the key, the key, one of your key tools you're gonna to be using for keeping opponents out are her death fists. Like with these moves, anytime an opponent ends up like whiffing a move, which means if a move misses in front of you, just punish them with a death fist. All right, so uh, one of the kind of really big strengths I do find at Hitomi is that her general movement is really good, especially her Korean backdash. I mean, it's generally inputted by doing um, just repeated quarter circles, uh, repeated quarter circle backs. Just do that repeatedly, and it will usually work. Hitomi's is one of the better Korean backdashes in the game. As for ge general movement, I usually also talk about just doing forward, forward, back, back, stuff like that. I mean, you can find more inf information about movement in my uh, in my other tutorials. I've done a tutorial on movement. And just also, if I end up saying anything in this tutorial that you don't know of, feel free to look at my other vi videos just to get a bit of a breakdown of that instead of me necessarily um, explaining that here. Uh, but uh, anyway, yeah, for... For Hitomi, it's generally okay to fight with her at like any range. She can uh, hold her own like at long range, like mid, at like long range, mid range, or like in close range. Anyways, uh, this is the part where I end up saying that for for any character, I say the first thing you do when you're learning them is to go into command training and learning them. But with I find that with Hitomi, it's a uh, it's like particular. It's particularly important to kind of like know what kind of like stuff she can do. Anyways, let's go have a look. Oh, I got some epic music in the background. Right here, with the command trading, we can see right now that Hitomi has 111 listed moves, which is, which is fairly average for DOA. I mean, yet a lot of characters in the roster do have over 100 moves, or it could be considered maybe very slightly above average. But yeah, she has a pretty prolific move set. So essentially, of course, same thing. Just go through, just go through the moves. Just do. This the main thing, of course, is just familiarizing yourself, because. Because particularly the thing with Hitomi's, with the way how her gameplay works, you essentially need to know... You essentially need to know her strings pretty, like, pretty much off heart. So, I mean, uh, once you start, like, getting used to them, the, the next thing you know is, like, what do you do with, like, certain tools and all that. All right, so the kind of uh, the kind of uh, st strings to worry about are strings where you tend to have good kind of a uh, mixed up potential. 
Basically, I, I tend to like strings that that kind of like branch that can branch off on different levels. Because basically, strings where opponents can't just simply easily deal with it with one option. So if if you can like kind of uh, if you can, can can kind of make use of strings where. If he can like make use of strings where Hitomi can kind of like hit on like multiple kind of on multiple kind of hit levels, I mean, so you branch off at different levels, then those are gonna be pretty effective ones to use. Though with Hitomi in general, I don't actually recommend like finishing strings, or not really that often, unless it ends with something that's like safe at the end. But even then, something like 3K P or. 3kp hold I mean that it ends up leading to a, a it ends up leading to a guard break that is positive but of course if it if, it, if an opponent sees you doing that they can just hold it so yeah those are like things to look out for so so just get used to so just get used to just uh, seeing the different kind of just getting used to the different kind of strings and seeing different kind of um, different kind of like uses or like purposes that you can discover for said strings. Alright, I said earlier that Hitomi is capable of, of fighting competently pretty much at like any range, or like long range, mid range, or in like close range. I might have said it earlier that if you're at fighting at long range, your focus is pretty much on going to be on keep out. So essentially it's just using your good Using your good generic movement to try and cause the opponent to overextend and to end up um, with an attack, or or possibly like if you're using the the three step block back step, you can actually uh, block moves, and if, they, if you end up blocking something unsafe, you can end up punishing with their their forward throw. Like I mean, it's a, a good um, a good rule of thumb to keep in mind is that. Uh, the main source of punishment in Dead or Alive 5 last round is throws. With Hitomi, your go-to punish throw is the forward throw. I mean, I'll explain about it. Uh, I'll explain about it a little later because this throw in particular is at, uh, her forward throw in particular is pretty pretty special because it, it's also used like the starter offense. But anyways, I'll just uh, keep going on at at mid range. At here is probably a range where. Well, same thing. I mean, you, if you went, you can end up using your movement to try and encourage the opponent to whiff something, or I mean, obviously whiff and punish something. Or if you can end up kind of poking around this range a bit. I mean, a general poke I like to use is you can use three KP, uh, P plus KP, which is does cause a decent stun on normal hit. Uh, for a low poke, you can use 1k, or yeah, 1k, 2h plus k, so which are which are pretty good lows. Like 1k, I like because it's uh, it leads into strings with multiple follow-ups. So I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a, it is actually it is actually a pretty decent poke, and it um in high crush where 2h plus k is a, considered a stand in low uh, but uh but moving along in close range right here this is where this is where Hitomi is going to be looking to try and keep the opponent on the defensive with her kind of uh what I call free cancel pressure so I, like, I recommend with Hitomi that you to not really finish strings unless it ends in something uh safe I mean, on block, her safe moves ge ten generally tend to be highs, like an H plus K, same as like 4 PP, uh, K stuff. I mean, e although of course, with being a high, I mean, you can end up, if the string doesn't jail, you can end up ducking under it. So, so yeah, that's, that's another thing to keep in mind though, so but. So what I mean by free cancel pressure is just simply not not finishing the string and just using it like little, well, little pokes. 
Uh, you can also couple that in your your free cancels with with uh, delays. I mean, it's, it's all about keeping the opponent guessing. I mean, when are you going to finish a string and start up doing something else? And when are you going to end up, like, completing it? I mean, free cancels and delays end up doing that, uh... Free cancels and delays end up doing that really well. Alright, around, like, close range or, like, edge around close mid-range, certain kind of pokes you can end up doing is something like PP 2K. So if the opponent's standing there blocking, just give them, hit them with a low poke. Something like Hitomi's PP 2K, it's a decent low, it's a, it's a decent low poke because it does technically have follow-ups. I mean, yeah, it's a low, it's another another low or a, a high follow-up, but in general, just for the sake of, just for the sake of the string, having a follow-up will, can cause the opponent to hesitate in trying to just simply attack afterwards after doing that. So you can use stuff like that, or 3k, t, 2k. I mean, the 2k in this string is essentially the same one as pp, 2k, so same idea, it's got follow-ups. But yeah, but with 3k, the main reason why you think you can get a get away, get away with this, or it's a decent check, is because PP has has like multiple options. So obviously the opponent has to watch out if you're going to do something like PPP, like because if you charge it, you get a positive guard break. Or you, even if you just chuck it out and they duck, then yeah, you'll you'll blast them, your blaster ass back. So yeah, so that so that is an option. Something I like to do, which is almost like a pretty kind of um, uh, pretty kind of like almost like Fisher Price uh, kind of free cancel delays. Just do 6k P. I mean, uh, of course there are fall ups like 6k P K K, uh, 6p K K K. Which goes mid, mid, high, mid, and you could do 6p K, 2k, and of course, always keep in mind, you can delay. Although of course, well, 6p, 6p K, K, well, it is a high, where 6p K, 2k is a low. Although a neat thing is any sort of variation of 3k K jails, even though it's a high, it jails on block, meaning that the if the opponent uh, blocks the first hit, then the second hit uh, they can't they, they can't hold it. With 3 KP, they technically there is a small window to hold the second hit, or technically you can also kind of like 2P. You can also 2P under it. Small hit. You can always 2P after it. All right, so let me just give a slight, a bit of a rundown now of uh, Hitomi. I'm mean, gonna continue on in a uh, close range. It's just her general kind of poke speed. All right, she has a 10 frame jab, 13 frame 6p, 13 frame 6k, and 14 frame 2p. That is plus one on on hit. I'll show that again. 10 frame jab, 13 frame 6p. 13 frame 6k and 14 frame uh, 2p that is plus one on hit. So being plus one on hit, what that ends up meaning is all their moves become one frame faster. So her jab becomes nine frame for 6p and 6k become 12 frame. And another, if you do a subsequent 2p, it's like it's doing a 13 frame low on them. So yeah, in Dead or Alive 5 last round, if your character has a plus one 2p, feel free to abuse it because it's Chances are it's usually really good. I mean, not all characters have plus one or two piece. Some of them, some characters even have two piece that are a minus one hit, for instance. But yeah, it's uh, this is her two P is still a useful tool because you can. I mean, obviously, an opponent doesn't want you're not going to stand there all day and just get two P. So they're eventually going to take some sort of action to not get continuously, continuously two P, two P to death or whatever. Uh, so, of course, once you have the opponent locked on the locked on the defensive, so you you got it. So they're in a, in a, so they're they're unsure of like what you're 
they're unsure of like what you're doing or anything and they're just standing there blocking. In that case, that's when you can try and sneak, you can try and sneak in 60s. Alright, what this throw is, is Hitomi's 7 frame. Uh, it's, it's Hitomi's uh, 7 frame punish throw and it gives her plus 10. With the plus 10, that means that she can generally do any move up until about like 18 or 19 frames and the opponent won't be able to intercept it. So that means after it, you can do something like 6H plus K for a decent stun. You can also do uh, something like 2P plus K also, which has a uh, high crush capabilities, 3KP, 6K, I mean, so different things, and of course the best one is just simply do it over and over, but of course a smart opponent will attempt to try and uh, fuzzy guard under that. I mean, generally after 6T, the opponent is going to be on the defensive, so that's how you can try and sneak in another one or sneak in a low. But of course, before you start trying to do that, make sure that they are doing what they're supposed to do in Garden and, and shake, shake them up with like 6K, uh, 6KK or 6DK or uh, 2 people's K. So those are usually good ones to, to make uh, good pokes to kind of uh, just ch like check your opponent to make sure that they're not, they're not, they're not trying to bar you or doing anything disrespectful from disadvantage. Uh, so with Hitomi, after you like get a knockdown or anything like that, what you generally want to do is, well aside from necessarily guessing what the opponent is uh, doing, you can attempt a, you can attempt a like force detect type attacks. Like for instance, off of uh, like, 2P plus K and K, you can do a 1P and a 1K. If the opponent doesn't push any button to try and tech roll, then this will tech him up. Technically 1P and 1K are considered ground hits, so they don't tech up right away, they just knock the opponent around. But if you do two of these type of moves in a row, two ground hit moves, It'll tech them. It'll tech them up automatically. Um, the, her two moves that uh, Hitomi has that you usually end up using for force teching would be like her two H plus K or her three H plus K. So with these moves, these are considered uh, these are considered force techs, like pure as opposed to ground hits. So they automatically wake up the opponent. Uh, most times I usually just go for 2 inches K to sweep also so if the opponent uh, like so if the if the opponent does like sidestep or anything it will it will track into them but, but yeah these are generally uh, good force techs. Like if it, like your fastest ground hit move is your fastest ground hit move is 1P. It's like this is a 15 frame, it's a track and it's also Hitomi's go-to high crush. So if opponent's trying to abuse highs against you, just do just do 1P. Uh, for Hitomi, a lot of her strings actually can end in a guard break. And I'll just I'll just show you they usually range from like plus three to plus eight with a couple exceptions that can go higher like like PPP with the charge is plus eight uh, P plus K PP is a uh, plus plus three um, well her only one that isn't a mid punch six six H plus K is plus three we're pretty much all of her other guard breaks are mid punches, so that's why you have to be a bit. You have to be a bit careful with with uh, always doing them because obviously, if you keep doing mid punches, the opponents are eventually going to mid punch hold you. 
So, I mean, I mean, yeah, so when an opponent is fighting Hitomi, they're generally probably going to prioritize mid punch hold because of a, a lot of, a lot of like mid punches in their strings. Yeah, but I'm um, just, just uh, conti continuing on with uh, guard breaks. The main use of this also is if you have the opponent, to, if you have the opponent really frozen and locked up, then you can usually try and sneak them in and then like continue, continue, continue your offense. All right, so I'll let you know now just a few of Hitomi's. Uh, tracking moves. What a tracking move means is a move that catches sidestep. So it means that the, can't, the opponent cannot cannot sidestep and will get hit. Uh, common uh, common tracking moves for Hitomi is like six H plus K. Uh, you can do two H plus K. Aforementioned one uh, P. Four P P. Uh, pro there are some others and there's some highs like uh, H plus K or or 4 6 K which actually is a which actually is an interesting move because you if the opponent um, does not perform a full stagger escape or a slow escape or a struggle escape I mean there's different names for it you can get a 4 6 P I mean, this is her her twelve her twelve frame high death list, which does that pretty decent damage, like around like forty, I think around uh, forty damage. So if they don't stagger escape, then you can get one of her death fists. Her two three thick P reaches, I think, slightly further, but is three frames slower at uh, I fifteen. So yeah, she used to get this move out of a sidestep. But they, 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 I guess Team Ninja thought it was too strong or something and they took it out and now she just gets her, her 6k string. Which is okay, which is okay, but of course I'm pretty sure Hitomi, uh, Hitomi fans or Hitomi players are having a lot of fun abusing that move back in like, you know. Alright, now I'll just uh, go over Hitomi's uh, throw game a bit. Uh, I won't, I won't, I won't bother going over every throw, but I'll just tell you that the, essentially the two throws you're going to be focused on when using Hitomi. Her forward throw and her 3-3-T, three, three which is her, her high damage throw, which is, which is best for punishing, um, punishing hold attempts. Because if the, if the opponent does try and, if the opponent does try and hold, Then, then just check out check, just check out the damage on this. There, see, it's 98 damage on high counter for for 3-3-T. On normal, I think it's about 66, which is also still respectable. But a cool thing is that if you end up getting it at a wall, then uh, you get a special throw, which ends up getting 66, 76 damage, which is an extra 10 damage plus a cool animation. I mean, for this throw, I usually call it the lunch money, the lunch money throw. Because when you end up doing an opponent, you end up have to tell them, "Give me your lunch money." Yeah, I mean, it just looks so badass. Also, even see the normal one looks pretty badass. See, you get, I mean, as you can, haven't already guessed, it told me it's a bully. So just, just abuse this stuff on her. Oh yeah, I said I, I said earlier I was gonna go over 60. Ah, uh, that's her her, her quarter circle. Uh, her quarter circle forward throw, which is a uh, you get okay damage if you can get the second hit for 70s. I mean, it, it's an okay throw, but of course, um, 60 is your go-to. What it does is it gives Hitomi, it gives Hitomi plus 10, which is um, obviously quite a bit of frame dam frame advantage to work with. So I said you can get up to like about I 18 moves, or will basically counter hit any sort of um, strike retaliation in a, that an opponent tries. So obviously, like, when I end up playing Hitomi, an objective I have is try and hit, see if you can hit 60 as many times as you can without the opponent punishing it. Of course, if the opponent punishes you with a strike, then you'll end up taking um, high counter damage, which is a uh, 150% more damage, which 
which you really don't want to do, but if the opponent's just standing there, if the opponent's just standing there blocking and letting you do that, then you can either do that or shake him up with shake him up with lows, like two H plus K or two P. Uh, one P is good on counter hit, but it is actually negative on normal hit, so you, you can't really like just spam it in a row. It's kind of just a user a high crush. Uh, one one K is decent just because it has follows, but but in general, I just recommend just two P or two H K. Two P is a safer option mainly because it's also instant high crush and is a bit faster, so. So yeah, those will, will be the lows you're going to be using the most. And where one key is mostly for um, interruption or just uh, interruption and high crush. Alright, um... One of the main tools that Hitomi has for dealing with faster characters is... Uh... Is there, um... High, well, I just call it the high block, or 9H, it's a... Uh, it's her punch parry, which can hold um, mid punches and high punches. Alright, it, it does give you, like, both versions do give you plus 7, like this is for a high punch. And I'll show you just a mid punch now. This one's also plus seven. For if you hold a mid punch and it has a different animation, but they both do the same they both do the same damage and give you the same advantage. Hit remember you're only at plus seven as opposed to like the plus ten, so you can only really do up to about fifteen or like sixteen frame moves. So if the opponent does try and attack, and you can also do this same thing after sixty, you can use three P which ends up giving a Ends up giving a lip stun on on counter hit, which see, that's plus 32 and it's a re really really strong stun. But this is you can use this to poke if you suspect the opponent may try and attack from disadvantage. I mean, it is a mid P. It is a mid P. So and of course there's always a kind of um 60k you can do, but. But generally, the kind of um, attempt follow-ups you do after a 60 or after her um, her uh, her high block, uh, both of them you're basically kind of having the same idea that it's it's about trying to control the opponent and keep on the defensive, like against a fast like a kind of like a Kasumi or a Christie characters with fast jabs or fast punching attacks that would beat you out otherwise in um, close range neutral. This will end up making them think twice about using about using higher mid punches. Um, and also, and anything also about the parry, which I, which I kind of just showed a little earlier, is you can actually do a follow up after it. You can do a high kick or a mid punch. the The high kick is the high kick is the high kick is safe. Um, where I think it's only it's only about minus five, but the the mid punch is unsafe on block. It's not it's not a, it's not a guard break or anything, but it is still a mix up. So so you could somewhat get, get away throwing this out sometimes and counter hitting any uh, retaliation. But of course, it is a hold. So if the opponent throws you, it'll be they'll get they'll get a high counter damage. So but. But it is nice to know that you do have a kind of fake out option. I mean, you can actually get, you can get, you can also kind of uh, get creative too. Like if the opponent is like stunned or something, they end up doing a hold. You can end up using this as like a fake out and launch him with that for like a juggle or something. All right, now I'll just show like a s small juggle you can do off her ex or expert kick hold. All right, she has two. She has two expert holds, um, expert mid punch hold and, and expert a mid kick hold. Her her expert mid punch hold just does slightly more damage than her normal one, so it's I actually personally don't find it that remarkable. But her her mid kick hold is a launcher. 
So the the, ju the juggle you end up just doing off here is right, I'll just show the input since I get this off. All right, it's just simply after the launcher, it's seven PK, then PP four PPP. If she gets on uh, normal hit, I think it gets about um, 70 damage, which is perfectly uh, respectable. So 7 KP, PP four PPP. The Pitomi is her wall game. All right, so what? Uh, I mean, it's another area that Hitomi excels at. So essentially, if you end up getting a wall slam, like with anything, I'm just using a Death Fist as an example, then use her this juggle as, you, as a, it's just a simple um, go-to juggle. What the input is, is 8pk, 8pk, 6pk. Like, you, you get solid, respectable damage from that juggle. An interesting thing also is that technically any variation of 236k is a safe high kick at minus 5. It used to be minus 1, but yeah, again, Team Ninja pr probably thought it was too strong because with only minus 1, you can easily abare right after. But yeah, but for... And a nice thing about uh, Hitomi is... She has a pretty fast wall splat move with 4 6 P. I mean, that's only... It's only 12 frames, so... It's completely unreactable. You can mix it up with, like, 2 3 6 P also. So those two moves are good wall, are, are good wall slam moves. And then you can use like also you can also try two people skate key except for except for if, obviously if you use strings it is it's generally possible for the opponent to hold a follow-up so single hit moves are are usually a good option all right I'll just show uh, I'll just show a little like critical burst setup you can just use with Hitomi, it's nothing too complex, but just like to give you an idea. Alright, for here it's just simply 2 P plus K, 3 P, quarter circle back P, 3 3 P. Uh, so it's 3 3 P, 4 K K, then P P, 4 P P P. I mean, that it gets uh, respectable damage. I mean, just let you know that. It, uh, before you get to the, before you get to the, the critical burst part, nothing before that is guaranteed. So technically, any of this, the opponent can hold. With a sit down stun, the opponent has to stagger, escape, and recover, and recover before it. Unfortunately, sorry. For Hitomi, this isn't uh, this is only this is only guaranteed if the opponent doesn't stagger escape. I mean, she did, these are basically like her two sit down stun attacks. Is um, quarter circle back P, which is her better sit down, and she also has a 8K. I prefer quarter circle P because it's a little faster, where 8K is kind of slow, and the stun isn't the, the stun isn't better. So yeah, so if, if you want to sit down stun, you could use quarter circle back P. Um, the only, technically the only guard breaks that Hitomi has that can guarantee anything would be her 4P plus K, which leaves her at plus 24, and her, her power blow attack leaves her at plus 17, so... You can get like a 3k P, 6p. I mean, you can get those attacks uh, guaranteed. So, so anything that's about 15 for it. And after, after the power blow guard break, anything 15 frames or faster would be guaranteed as long as it can reach. For 3k, it's 14 frames. So. So it will be guaranteed. 
off of her four P plus K, you have to charge it fully. Like I'll show you the difference right now. If you just tap it, you get plus six, which doesn't guarantee anything, but leaves you at an advantage. If you hold it, you get plus 24. Unfortunately, you, as much as I would love it, you can't get a guaranteed uh, 9K, which is a really good launcher and technically is a hop, also a hop kick. Being a mid K makes it a nice low crush also. But yeah, off of four P plus K, you could do the same setup. And yeah, I'll just, why not? I'll show off this, this awesome special power blow in this game. So yeah, so off of this, you can do the same 3P quarter circle back P, then just do your, go for the critical group. Um, in Dead or Alive 5, in, including last round, generally what you want to do is to stun the opponent, so get off a stun. The, the most common way, of course, is by just throwing, it's just simply connecting something on counter hit will almost always stun the opponent in some way. But with Hitomi, you can you can also stun on, well, well, technically any character can, but with Hitomi, you can stun on normal hit also. So you can use stuff like 2P plus K, 9P, 7P, well, there's P, 6P, P, which is kind of the same thing, which is actually a good high along with 9P. Um, also, you can also use 6 H plus K. Another good one also is P plus K P. So I mean, again, anything that generally allows you to be able to follow up with something like 3 K P or 3 P is, is usually good because 3 P, of course, is your is your uh, is basically your go to uh, lift your go to lift stun. Anyways, I think that's uh, that's enough information for now. Like, I don't want to like bomb bombard you. Uh, too much but I'll just give you a bit of a, a recap now all right just to let you know I uh, Itomi is a uh, Itomi is a well-rounded character that is perfectly suited for beginners but can al but also has the tools to be competitive at a high level um, she's effective at she could be she can pretty much fight at any range comfortably when you're at long range focus around keep out when you're at mid range you can poke her you also can still focus around um, well, trying to trying to get the opponent to possibly whiff something, then you can uh, come in and and you can punish. And in close range, you're focusing on close range pressure. So finding ways to keep the opponent on the on the defensive by shaking them up with lows, throws, or free cancels and delays. If you are going to finish your strings, I recommend finish in with something that's safe or uh, or guard break so something that obviously can't be like easily easily punished primary stuff to practice is just kind of um is this tr is the main thing to do is just uh, c continuously kind of go through the command train and try to just remember all those things when you can kind of do any of her um when you can kind of do her strings well if you know all of them off by heart and if you can you can learn them then you can kind of just you can end up flowing a bit better on the fly, so that's uh, definitely something that I. That's definitely like one of the number one things I recommend, and I find is really important with Hitomi. Anyways, that's it for now. Uh, I want to thank you for for joining me to for joining me today for this uh, small tutorial, and uh, good luck with your Hitomi training. I'll just give you a couple of last tips. Uh, be careful of characters like Christy or Leifang. Christy, because two reasons, because you, you, you do have to respect their speed, and of course you have your 9H nine, nine Keeper in check, but be careful of things like her Jakayo stance, like um, her trying to Jakayo after strings, especially when there's a follow-up that's a high, which is pretty common with Hitomi. With Lei Fang, just be careful for powerful parries, like her strong uh, punch parry and punch sabaki, so it's just things to keep in mind, but of course if someone's abusing parries, just take their lunch money. Just give them a good 6T or 3-3T just to, just, to keep, just to keep them in check. So anyways, if you have any, any more questions, feel free to contact me on 3-Step Dodge. And uh, I mean as force of nature. And that's it for now. 
Uh, th thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time on Top Tier Tips.